Hi everyone and welcome to the first episode of my top 500 games or rather what would be the first episode this is actually the second episode if you haven't seen the first episode I implore you to go back and do it so any questions that you may have about the list how I came up with the list um, the rules that I've set myself as to what counts what doesn't count all of that sort of stuff if you have any of those types of questions then I implore you to go and check the first video first before actually continuing on with this. So if you have any questions or you find something a bit odd or whatever, then go back and check that first episode. But presumably you've already listened to all that, so I am just going to start right now by counting down my top 500 games. So here we go. At number 500 we have Motocross Madness. This is actually a game that I played at my dad's house many years ago. It was what was quite strange about it was that it was quite a novelty at the time to be able to play a game at my dad's house that wasn't like a handheld game because he had he had this on his PC. I remember there was the races that you could do and there was also like the trick arenas where you could just drive around on your motorbike um, and perform tricks and score points. I remember the trick arenas actually what was quite funny was that um, you could escape sort of the arena by like the surrounding cliffs you could find a way to like climb up them or jump up over them which is meant to be like the level barriers but you could if you draw far away enough you'd hit the invisible wall and you just like shoot back off into the level which was quite funny basically what would happen is me, me and my brother would compete to see who could get the most points in the, in a trick and we had no idea how to play so basically what would happen is I'd, I'd be at the keyboard and I'd I'd just try pressing some buttons and I'd score like 6,000 points and then he'd try and he'd eventually score like 6,400 and then I'd try and then every time we got a bit more points it was that level of excitement of haha I got more points than you did. Which also kind of reminds me of that um, Bop It toy that uh, my brother also got one Christmas which is unrelated to this because it's not a video game. Check back the rules if you're unfamiliar with that even though I think you can pretty much guess that that wouldn't include. Anyway, whatever. Let's get on to number 499 is Cookie Clicker. This is a game that is, it's one of those games where it's sort of like everyone sighs at how bad it is, but everyone secretly likes it. You know what I mean? Not not like it like a lot. Like no, no one goes out of their way to like seriously enjoy Cookie Clicker like as a serious, serious thing. But it's more of like, it's kind of like a joke. If you're not familiar with Cookie Clicker, it's sort of like a parody on the free-to-play style games where the idea is that you click on things and you get stuff. So you have a cookie and you click the cookie and it counts up. You have zero cookies, you have one cookie, you have two cookies. And with these cookies, you can you can buy power-ups. And the power-ups are like pointers that will uh, periodically click on the cookie for you. And then you can up upgrade to buying grandmas who will bake cookies for you. and you can upgrade your amount of cookies per click or just your general cookie intake and it gets ridiculous to the point where you can have like particle colliders and time machines transporting cookies from alternate universes and you will get billions upon billions of cookies per second. It's it's quite funny. But it's also I've seen people online who do like cookie clicker races like they try to find like the optimal path through the game, which sounds really weird, but that's what people do. Number 498 is Altered Beast. I was never a massive fan of Altered Beast, and I know that some... I think it was kind of one of those games where it was kind of like, haha, look at all these graphics that we can do with the Sega Genesis. It was quite strange, and the controls were quite strange, in that like, I remember you pressed like a button to like to crouch and kick directly up or something like that and you basically go through the levels and you collect orbs to power up into a beast and with this beast you unlock extra powers and then at the end of the level you get a boss it's very very basic stuff there really isn't much to, to talk about it in that regards i suppose pretty hard game as well it's 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 not that great but it's okay i guess you know Number 497 is a game that everyone loves to hate, and that is Rascal. The I, I actually, you know, I actually didn't think so negatively of Rascal as much as other people seem to. I remember it was advertised on TV when it was coming out, and me being a kid, I wanted it because, you know, it looked cool and everything. 
and I did get it. Um, I don't remember the story behind it or anything, but I remember you're a kid with like a backwards cap because you know it's so nineties and it's it's like cool and everything, and you have this bubble gun that shoots bubbles out, and you travel to different worlds. Um, it's basically like a platform game, but it had tank controls, which I know a lot of people hate. I mean, I I don't. I mean, from what I remember, it, it was it was pretty hard to control, pretty awkward. But at the same time, I didn't think it was as bad as most people did. I remember when I first discovered that you could go through different timelines of different levels, so you could have like the past version, then you could have the present version of it. I thought that was quite interesting. And then you had like Atlantis, where the present version of it was underwater. Yeah, I kind of remember that. Number four hundred ninety-six is Tekken, the original Tekken. I actually wasn't I, I was actually uh, not introduced to the Tekken series through Tekken 1, but rather through Tekken 2. Tekken 1 seems to be like the bare basics of a Tekken game. I'm not sure if it was or how much it tied into the whole release of the PS1 or anything like that, so you know don't don't quote me or don't rely on me for like any history lessons in that regards, but I think I can't remember if I got Tekken 1 before Tekken 2, but I know for certain I played Tekken 2 before Tekken 1, and it was just a basic fighting game, I suppose, but at the time, it was kind of, I mean, I was kind of a bit beyond the point where a 3D fighting, like a 3D graphics were like really impressive to me, so I think I was a little bit beyond that point, but it was still, it was still alright. I remember that there was sort of like, hit, like extra characters like hidden in the data that you don't think you could unlock by playing the game, and I remember you using a cheat to unlock those hidden characters. I'm not too sure if that's true exactly, but that's what I remember. <sighs> Number 495. Now, hmm. okay, this is where I'm going to get some controversy out of this, if at all, because this is a game that people have... I've heard people say that this is their favourite game of all time. I've heard people say that this game is amazing. And this is a relatively new game. It came out just a few years ago. But honestly, this this game to me was like the absolute bare minimum of a puzzle game. And I should actually probably mention it's Brothers A Tale of Two Sons. Because uh, I've heard so many people say like this game is amazing. And I remember Total Biscuit made a video saying that you have to play this game without explanation. It's just amazing. It's, it's, and I know, and I know it's all down to opinion and stuff, but I have to say, it's really not. It's, it's the absolute bare basics. Like, you could, the way that it works is that you control the two brothers, one with each analog stick. Uh, like, you press L2 to control, like, to have the action, it's like the action button for one of the brothers, and the R2 is the action button for the other brother. And... You have to basically go through a series of puzzles, but so many of the puzzles are so easy. There's some where it, it requires, I suppose, a little bit of thought. Like, um, I mean, I don't want to spoil it. I'm not going to spoil any of the story or anything. But I remember there's like a puzzle where you got to like swing on ropes. That takes a little bit of figuring out, I suppose. And there's the one where you're maneuvering a steel pipe through a, like a sort of maze, which takes very little effort, but yeah. But some of them is just like, use the big brother to lift the little brother up, then use the little brother to push the rope down so the bigger brother can climb. It's it's like the, the bare basics. And people saying that, people, I'm, I'm not going to spoil it, don't worry about that. People talking about how the ending is amazing and how it conveys so much emotion without sound, it doesn't. It just doesn't. Okay, moving on from that, hopefully this will, we'll go on to something a bit less controversial now. Number 494 is Super Methane Brothers. This is a game I had on the Amiga, and I, I know now, obviously, that the name is a pun on Super Mario Brothers, sort of. Um, but it, it was kind of like a... I suppose the best thing you can compare it to is Bubble Bobble. I've not really got much experience with Bubble Bobble, but from what I can tell, it is kind of like Bubble Bobble. Uh, you kind of have like all these series of levels where each level is a set square, and you've got to kill all the enemies in that square, and then you move on to the next level. And you basically, it's up to two players, and you control one of the Methane Brothers, and you use these sort of like vacuum things to throw this gas at them. It's supposed it's meant to be Methane, so you suck them up, and you throw the enemies against the wall, and then you can collect whatever items you can pick up from whatever they've dropped. Off the, like just they, the items like fly all over the place. It's 
can be quite hectic in that regards. And the music, I remember um, I once watched a video that used music from Bubble Bobble and thinking it was Super Methane Brothers, so obviously Super Methane Brothers have sort of like ripped them off. But yeah, I actually remember saying to one of my teachers, uh, describing that I had a game where you play as someone who you got to like vacuum open and throw enemies against the wall. And she was like, oh, it's so violent, it's so violent. Oh, back in the day. How, I mean, I would have been like five or so at that time. Number 493 is Shadow of the Beast. This game is alright. It's... You control the the beast character, and it's quite a it's it's a game. It's sort of like a game of puzzles in a way, but it's quite strange because my friend I was introduced to it from my friend Matthew, who I will probably talk about every often throughout this list because he showed me quite a, quite a lot of games when I was younger. But he showed me this game. I think he had it on the Master System, and I got a Master System converter for my Mega Drive, which I'll, I'll go through that story another time. But he showed me Shadow of the Beast, and I remember that he was always stuck, because like, after the first level, you get stuck in like, this prison castle thing. But the idea is that if you don't go through that level and you just move to the left, you'll end up going through a tree, and there'll be like a, a different level, and that's the way you're meant to go. And there's like items you could pick up. So you'd pick up like portions, and there were portions that hurt you if you use them. You pick up the item, and then you can use them from the menu. And I remember saying, oh, you should not pick up the weak portions that make you weaker. And he would always say, oh, you can pick them up, just don't use them. And I would say, like, oh, but there's, you, you, it would mean less space and stuff uh, in your in your inventory. I, I didn't use the word inventory when I was that young, of course, but I would know, I would say, like, you know, don't pick up the, the like, the bad items. And there was, I remember there was a coin that you could pick up and drop it in the well. And it was, it was really, really strict. Like, you could pick up a key and then use it somewhere other than the door and then you'd lose the key and you couldn't complete the game. I think the series from that point on kind of progressed, like continued to do that, I don't really know, but yeah, it was quite interesting. Number 492 is Robot Wars Advanced Destruction. Now, if you live in the UK, you'll know what Robot Wars is if you don't. If you live in America, it's I think it's called BattleBots. There's like the, the American version is BattleBots, and I was really into Robot Wars as a kid, um, and I I think I had played the PS2 game before at this point. Uh, I had a Game Boy Advance, and I kind of I, I grossly I grossly overestimated the power of the Game Boy Advance when I was younger, and that will become apparent in another game on this list later on. But I, I really got into the uh, the PS2 game, so I got the Game Boy Advance game because this was before I had a PS2, and I remember like. It was interesting, I mean, I liked it because it was Robot Wars, I was into Robot Wars, but the problem with it was that the, te the hybrid just wasn't there. It, you couldn't simulate an actual Robot Wars type fight within that limited technology. Things would seem, seem to be very binary, like you had robots that could flip, you had robots that were like, uh, that could go both ways, and you had robots that couldn't. You had an attacking weapon. It was it was very very bare basics, and you you would never have a robot like flip halfway and like sort of like sleep like slammed against the wall. It was either completely flipped or not flipped at all. It was one of those two, like limit, limited hardware. You did get to make your own robots, which was okay. I mean, it didn't really have much going for it. Like I said, uh, you could play as robots that were in Robot Wars, so like uh, Deator, Dominator, I think. And I think you unlock you like you unlocked ones later on like Chaos Two and Pussycat and Hypno Disc. So it was more like later se later series type uh, robots that got popular like Firestorm. You know that if you know if you know Robot Wars, you know what I'm talking about Razor and Tornado. That that lot. Uh, I remember. I think my favorite part of of this of this game was that you could go in alternate arenas and sort of like have like an endless mode where. Like robots would like you'd be in the middle of this arena and then robots would come out and attack you one by one you had to survive for as long as you could and then we had like alternate arenas and stuff which, which was interesting i actually don't remember how much the house robots were involved in that game i don't even remember if sir killer lot was in it now that i think about it okay moving on number 491 is wacky races this uh the ps1 game wacky races is, is one of the games that i had that i didn't play too much but I, I sort of like I did enjoy it, and I remember the main thing. One thing that stood out to me was that the really could that you couldn't play as all the wacky races. There were some of them that were just taking out. Like obviously they had the like the main staple ones like 
uh, Penelope pit stop and Dick Dastardly. And I think they had the cavemen, but I don't think, I don't remember if they had the inventor or the, you know, the Red Baron, the one that was in the aeroplane. The Red Baron. I, I, this is me just talking about wacky business here, but the Red Baron, from what I recall, he was hardly involved in the series at all. So I wouldn't be surprised if they cut him out. He was basically one of those, like, you know, those kart racing games. You, you know, you know what they're like. I think it was like six, six races per race and... The issue what I had was that I got to a level whereby I couldn't progress because it was just so hard. Uh, you had to sort of like jump between buildings and I couldn't do it. I couldn't get any further than that. Number 490 is Fantastic Four for the PS1. I actually had a demo of this game and I actually um, I played it quite a bit. And it was just it was just like the standard beat em up I suppose. But the graphics were kind of in that sort of looked 3D but weren't really 3D sort of sprite style if you know what I mean. It, it did have that sort of like appeal. I think this was quite early when I got a PS1 that I played this game. And a heads up, I know nothing about the Fantastic Four. I know there's the, I know what the Fantastic Four, I know there's the guy who's like, who's like the flame guy. I know there's the thing who's the monster. I know there's the stretchy guy and then there's the other, the lady that has invisible powers. I don't know, I don't really know anything else about the franchise or anything but you could I remember finding out that you could switch between these characters and it would be interesting to see because they all had different like health bars like just appearance wise I know these are very superficial things that I'm talking about but this is very early on the list and this is very this is stuff that I remember quite vividly as well um, but I did I did enjoy playing the game and I remember you could play as She-Hulk which I, at the time I had no idea who She-Hulk was I mean I don't all I know about She-Hulk now is that it, she's a female version of Hulk I, I don't know anything like Marvel, DC, or anything like that related. So, you know, you you probably know you you probably will know more than I do in that regards. But you could play She-Hulk. I remember thinking it was strange that there was like a fifth character in the Fantastic Four, just because it was called the Fantastic Four and there was a fifth character. But yeah, I played it quite a bit and I had quite a good time with it. Number four hundred ninety. Sorry, no, number four hundred eighty-nine is. A game uh, that I is a very old game, but I played it on the Xbox 360 arcade, and that is New Rally X. It's like one of those like really early arcade games where you uh, you control like sort of like a Formula One car, and you have to navigate your way through a maze and like collect things and avoid other races and stuff. It, it was it was quite interesting. I don't really have much to say about this because I played it quite rather briefly, I think, but it was all right. Yeah, it was alright. I'm going to have to move on to the next game because I don't have anything else to say about it. No nostalgia related to it, I suppose. Number 488 is Bejeweled 2. I got Bejeweled 2 on the PS3. Uh, it's a very simple match 3 game, so to speak. Uh, with Bejeweled 2, I remember, um, I actually I did get all the trophies on it. And some of them, some of them are really awkward. Like, get five hypercubes onto the onto the board at once, and like to get a hypercube, you have to match five all at once. Have like five of those on the. I'm not going to explain all the rules of Bejeweled to you. It's a pretty simple game, and there was also the uh, the challenge mode, right? Like the puzzle mode, and there was the like the time attack and all that basic stuff. But you know, I like the what I did. I like the background music and the whole scenery and everything. And it, there's that. Like that voice at the start, where it's like, Welcome to Bejeweled 2, like at the start. Yeah, it was it was one of those like early PS3 download games, I guess. But yeah, that was alright. Um, yeah, so I'm going to end this part here. Uh, so from the next video onwards, I'm going to start on game number 487, and we'll continue from there. So thank you everyone for listening, and I will see you all next time.